over to her and let her introduce the speaker by a roundabout way. Yeah. Like David said, I've never done this before. And it's like I'm going to tell you, on my first date I had with my wife, I'm backing out of the driveway. I kind of stopped and I looked at her and I said, now, I don't know where this is going to go. I'll tell you one thing, I lie a lot. <laughs> now with this, most of it is the truth. What you don't understand Somebody else will have to tell you, and I doubt that they can. We'll talk about the first roads in this area. They were just wagon roads. In other words, just wherever they went, the easiest route around the trees over the hills. Then during the Civil War, they had a, a telegraph line that went through this country. From St. Louis to Springfield. So, on this, maintain this 
telegraph line, they kind of built a road along with it. And that road, I can pretty well tell you about how it went from Arlington. That's down east of here. And it went around and up through Hooker, or what they call Taylor Holler, and on over the hill and up to the top of the hill near, near what is now Jay Highway. There was a little settlement there they called Clementine. That was a little grocery store and a post office. And people went and got their mail once a week because that's the only time mail was delivered there, because that was out really in the country. <coughs> so, the wire road had continued on through and down through what we call Hooker Holler, and you can still find traces of this old wire road. It went right in front of my grandfather's and grandmother's house, down across through their pastures and on through across the river there at what we call the Hooker Ford. You can still find it in spots. It goes over the hill and continues off through Waynesville and off Springfield. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about my life growing up as a kid. My first transportation was an animal about so high. It was too big to be called a pony. It was too small to be called a horse. And I rode that thing in in style. That just was a rope around its head and no saddle. Away we went. Okay, we'll get back to 66. That gives you kind of an idea. And this wire road is pretty well in the same direction as 66 went. And 66 was, I started sometime in the early 20s. That was right after I was born, they decided to build a road. Because this other road was just a, just a trail. So this was a graded road, and I remember it there at what is now the Hooker School, because that was our way out from over on the farm. And that's where all of the grading construction people now, this road was originally built with horses and mules, with plows and scrapers. And I think they had one, what we call a steam engine. It was a big contraption that had a bucket on it. But the engine on it was run by steam, like a railroad steam engine. So that was the construction of this road. And it went pretty well across the same line as the old wire road. Well, this road was all graded and graveled. And they put in some bridges. People could travel pretty well. Because back when all this started, there was not very many automobiles. There's no way they could cross the river when the river was low. Just had to sit and wait till the river went down. Somebody with a team of mules or horses drug them across. So, after they got this road built, they had to maintain it because it was just gravel. And the way they maintained it was with a team of horses or mules, they pulled a little old four wheel grader. They kind of kept the holes filled up, the rocks pushed off. That was the way they maintained this road. So it went on for several years. I'm not sure when it was when it was paved, but it was probably in the late twenties. And uh, now, folks, I'm not old. I just been here a long time. I don't want you to think when I tell you these dates that I'm getting old. So anyway. They paved this road with concrete, and it came out to the top of the hill, what is now the rock wall, going into Devil's Elbow. And at this rock wall, they quit the pavement, 
and they didn't start it up again until they got over to Jay Highway. And they started the pavement run right on. They left this stretch of crooked road through there and was gravelled. Well, they stayed gravelled for years and years. And the reason they stayed gravelled, now this is in about close to 30. That's 1930. They decided they wasn't going to build a dam. And the reason for this vacant spot, they was going to build a dam at Arlington. And it would flood all the way up the Gascade River to Waynesville and up the little, the big piney, all past Devil's Elbow. So they, when they decided not to build a dam, the reason for that was they built a dam, or was building a dam, at Lake of the Ozarks. So they eventually went ahead then and they paved this road with blacktop. Still find it today for it. Before I told you, to the other side, it's just blacktop road. So that was the way they covered that. Then, so we'll get down to the, to the highways, as you know on today. The first four lane highway. I know anything about is on 66. It's from what was Grandview Grocery across down the, across the Big Piney River and up the hill and up to Jay Highway. Now, the reason that section was built, that was built in the 1940s, early. When we had the World War II, I don't know if any of you probably have heard of them. But they had what they call bomber trucks. They were big trucks. They were long, tall, and wide. I think they had two big engines in them. And what they did, they hauled the bomber parts from St. Louis to a factory down in Oklahoma. There was fuselages or whatever they had. But they were big, and they couldn't make the turns around these sharp curves. If any of you have been on the old highway, you know how sharp some of them are. The main one was there at Devil's Elbow. They couldn't get around the corner even on the bridge. So they had to use winch trucks or whatever to drag the back end of the trailers across so they could cross the bridge. Well, they carried a crew with them. There was flagmen, armed guards, they had these big old wreckers to winch them around on these curves. So that was the reason they built this road that I was telling you about, this four lane. And it went down through. And that eliminated what is now Devil's Elbow and eliminated Hooker. And getting back a little farther back, I don't know when. But when they built this first road, it wasn't called 66. It was Highway 14. If any of you can do history and find out how long it stayed 14, I don't know. But I remember in, high, in school, the number 14 was painted on the end of the culvert right at the schoolhouse. Then in later years, they called it 66. So that pretty well covers a highlight of the history of 66 down in, in that area. Uh, during the Korean War, the news media got a hold of it. There was lots and lots of automobile accidents. And it was on a two-lane road. That'd be the, to the east of this new four-lane and to the west of it. It was just a crooked road. When they'd have an accident, there'd be two cars, and then there'd be two or three more, and it was quite a deal. So anyway, the news media in St. Louis 
nothing wrong with St. Louis, don't get me wrong. But they couldn't print anything unless it was about bloody 66. And that was the Globe Democrat. So it went on for a while. And so the, the people that were news media that was out here collecting all this information, they would cause you a lot of trouble trying to get information. I run record service at that time, and uh, it was not very nice. But anyway, they'd try to get information out of you about it with truck drivers, of what happened here and what happened there. Well, anyway, the local people wasn't liking this uh, deal that they were putting in the papers. So they were all down at these news people were down at the at Jody's Bar and Grill. That was on Route 66 in what is now St. Roberts. Well, they got the party and they run into trouble. They run into a bunch of the local people. And they got skinned up. And a couple of their cars got damaged. And that was the end of that. There was no more news about the bloody 66. It quieted down. And that's my story, folks, on 66. Thank you. Highway 14. 